this is the P40MN variant of the Warfort. This is the P40MN of uh, Warhawk in 172nd by Academy. And it's uh, one of the latest versions of the P40 with the uh, late version canopy where it had more um, visibility and a longer fuselage. So it's a, it's a nice variant. And um, starting with the instructions, it's a fold out type of instructions there and um, pretty basic and straightforward so it's quite easy to follow you've got the cockpit and the fuselage halves coming together and then um, a choice whether you're doing the N or the M version and uh, that makes up the rear part to the cockpit or fuselage and then you join the lower wing with the two parts of the upper, t upper half of the wing coming together there and then you start with um, the landing gear uh, only a wheel, option, wheel, wheel down option for this one, so you don't get an in-flight option. And then um, start our assembly on the bombs, so deciding on the bomb load. And then we're on to the cockpit and the final parts with the propeller and the canopy coming on. Uh, then we've got marking options. The first one is for the N variant, which is uh, the US Air Force at, uh, in China, 1944. And then we've got, um, again, this is the uh, Royal Australian Air Force in New Guinea, 1945. And then we've got the sprue breakdown there as well. There is another option as well for the um, RAF M version which is Sicily 1943. Forgot to mention that paint call outs in these paint call outs through this is uh, generic so it's just telling you the actual colours it's not using a paint manufacturer here from what I can see so you've like for instance you've got white, black, red, yellow metallic grey, interior green and it gives you the FS number and olive drab, neutral grey and dark green all with the FS numbers as well as the RAF numbers so it should be quite easy to use those uh, for the paints that you're used to using. So starting with the fuselage halves we've got very nice recessed panel lines and rivet detail right the way across as well as internal detail for the cockpit here. It all looks very good, no problem. Then we've got uh, another sprue here with the underside of the wing and the bottom of the fuselage as well as some of the horizontal st rear horizontal stabilizers and the wheels here which are in so they are molded in one complete section with a there is a seam line running down them uh, but quite good tread pattern that should look very good um, with the tail wheel and a few other parts smaller details for the exterior of the aircraft very nice nose cone there with the um, recessed panel line running across it which you don't get in all kits and that's uh, and sometimes you have to add that it's just a smooth nose cone so it's quite good that, that there, that's there I do have quite a large scratch in mine where they've been um, where the two sprues have been put together but I'm sure I can sand that out so that's no problem and then we've got the next sprue with the tops of the wings here with the guns moulded in. Um, again, very nice recessed panel lines right the way across. It's absolutely no problem. Um, the detail is very good. We've got fabric um, detail on the ailerons here as well, which is extremely nice. And here you can see the different parts for the rear of the fuselage, uh, rear of the cockpit. Sorry, so that's the N version. The N version, and then you've got the standard parts, which is more like the usual P40E, and the uh, with these parts here. You've got the cockpit floor, um, which isn't shaped along with the bottom of the wing. I think the um, most kits go wrong in uh, not giving the cockpit floor the slight slope that it had I think that uh, it went along with the bottom of the wing as far as I know but um, it might be different in this case or that might be it's still meant to be sloped but either way I don't tend to worry about that so much in this scale 
Um, you're not going to see a whole lot in there once you've got the canopy on. And um, the cockpit details look very good. You've got raised details on the instrument panel here, which is quite nice. That should paint up well. Then we've got the clear parts, which are very clear, especially for a 172nd kit. They're um, crystal clear. They're on par with uh, Edward clear parts, so that's very nice to see. And you've got um, both options here, so you've got the M or the N versions, uh, with, and they had very different canopies, that was one of the main changes with them, so you've got the more standard P40 rear of the canopy here with the two windows on the side of the fuselage. Or you've got the extended version here, which gives more visibility to the rear of the canopy. Then lastly onto the decals. These are printed in Korea, so they're not um, cartograph ones, and these are dated 1999, so that shows you the age of the kit. Uh, very nice register right across. I don't know what they'll be like as far as um, quality. You can see there's quite a lot of carrier film across them, um, but I'm sure they go on when you use the setting solutions quite well. The colour's very rich and very strong, and the extremely good register, absolutely no problem with the alignment or register. It's quite nice to have the Australian Air Force uh, included as well, which is a nice option that you don't tend to get. It's usually overlooked uh, that theatre of the war, so it's very nice to have that included. And um, we've got stencil data here. Most of this is just sort of squiggles. It's not um, actual words, you can't read it, but um, I'm not sure you'd be able to at this scale anyway, so that's probably more in scale than if you could read it. So that's a very nice kit. Should make into a nice quick build and uh, shouldn't give many fit problems. I've built quite a few Academy kits in the past and I've never had too many major problems. So um, that's a really nice option for a later war P40 and um, you can obviously use aftermarket decals as well and these were used all across the uh, theatre of war in World War II. So right the way across into um, the Pacific as well as uh, in the desert with the RAF. So there's plenty of options for this aircraft. So that's highly recommended. That's the Academy 172nd P40MN Warhawk.